So I want to pick up where we left off last time. And uh, what I was doing was going through some examples of sort of modern developments and modern research in solid mechanics. I showed you this kind of very nice uh, result that Professor Scott Bunch in, in our department kind of ha has, this is where I left off last time, kind of has just developed where he is looking at single layers, single atomic layers of graphite called graphene and trying to explore the mechanical behavior of them, kind of developing very innovative experiments. These are shown sort of on the left. He basically suspends these structures, these kind of very thin, uh, as thin as you can get, membranes, and then actuates them and uses kind of laser, uh, various kind of methods of using lasers to interrogate mechanical properties. Um, so kind of very exciting experimental mechanics kind of both in the coupling of experimental and kind of computational mechanics. Professor Jerry Chi, who you kind of met as he walked in here in our department, and kind of this is work that he and kind of his graduate students, Kevin Long, ha has been working on. And Jerry and Kevin have been kind of working on modeling and doing experiments in the thermal mechanical behavior of an exciting class of materials called shape memory polymers. And essentially what these are, these are polymeric materials where one can take the material, sort of fabricate a component in one state, say simply a block, and then heat it up to a certain temperature and deform it in very complex ways, kind of maintain that deformed shape and then cool it while maintaining the shape to below, back to its room temperature or processing temperature, and then remove the constraints that are holding it in this deformed shape, and it'll maintain this new shape. And the innovative thing about these type of materials are, the innovative thing is that this new shape kind of is, is what it ex is what the component exists in now, but in s internal to the material, it remembers its previous shape. So you've trained it in this new, or you've trained this previous shape, and I can recover this previous shape that it remembers through a thermal process. And indeed, I can simply just heat this up, and I can heat it up again, and it'll recover its original shape. And as an example of this, on the left here is a little video of an indentation experiment where this ball is going to be indented into the material. It, the material sits here at room temperature. It's raised above, to, you know, to a higher temperature. The ball is indent, indents the material. Uh, it, it's held there as it's cooled, and then when it's the ball's removed, this material has a dimple in it. And then another thermal process occurs where we heat it in a prescribed way to recover the initially flat shape. And I'll see if I can kind of run this movie. It looks like it's working. So here it's being indented. Okay, now it's being held as it's being cooled. You obviously can't see that. Now I take the shape, take the ball away here in a minute, and you'll see this impression in this glassy material now. And now I'll start heating the material back and recover, completely recover, you know, fully this indented shape. And you see a little bit of a ring around here. I don't know how well this comes up on the kind of various monitors you're looking at. You see a little bit of a ring, and that's actually just due to some of the lubricant that's there. So you can imagine the kind of very exciting material that can be used in a variety of ways. Uh, people are interested in actually making memories, erasable memories out of these kind of materials. But uh, Kind of a, Professor Chi is one of the world experts at, at actually kind of experimentally and modeling these kind of materials. And over on the left are results of some of the simulations that his graduate student Kevin Long has done. And I'll see if I can these you can they're sort of self if it if it actually runs there you go you can sort of see essentially this kind of being indented over here on the left uh, and then over time held and then slowly this thing will then recover and that impression will be removed. And while they're not synced here kind of to see it, these are actually quantitatively in very good agreement, sort of the deformed shapes and the temperature profiles and so forth. So this is an example of using what's really cutting edge, sophisticated solid mechanics, coupled thermal and solid mechanics, kind of to model this very complex phenomenon. Kind of an another example is kind of some of Kind of my work, we've been looking at trying to understand the interaction 
of surfaces at very small scale structures, and I'll, I'll show you a couple other examples, but I mentioned this idea that in, in solid mechanics these days, there's a lot of interest in, in understanding the behavior of really small structures when perhaps the theories of solid mechanics that we're going to learn about here in, in class don't hold. And of one example of that is we've looked, and this is kind of largely work of a, an excellent graduate student that kind of worked with me named Frank Del Rio, kind of looked at building a kind of test structures and doing experiments to understand the effect of roughness and of, of humidity uh, on, on adhesion at really small scales of kind of MEMS type samples with nanometer scale roughness. And this sort of shows an example, a cantilever sample that we use to actually measure adhesion. This is sort of the surface kind of here over on the left that we, that we uh, kind of deal with. These are the type of surfaces that we characterize. And then when we bring these into contact, which is shown schematically in the, over on the right, what happens are that the surface forces, mainly due to Van der Waals attraction, but in certain cases due to capillary forces as well, can are strongly uh, um, are, are very strong and can cause these surfaces to come together and and fail by kind of permanently sticking them together. So we've been developing models and in doing experiments to understand the effect of, of humidity in this picture that's shown here on adhesion energy. And these are kind of some of the first results ever that have conclusively illustrated this, this effect. Kind of my colleague in aerospace engineering department that many of you in the aero department may be interested in working with, Kurt Maute, Professor Kurt Maute, kind of takes sort of modern finite element codes, modern computational tools in solid mechanics, and couples them with optimization tools to actually optimally design components. By optimally design, you know, he can actually tailor the shape of a material or the layout of a material. This is an example of that called topology optimization. Or on the left, what he's done is taken a, a two-phase material and tried to lay it out in a way in other words, put blue and red in certain areas such that he can take a wave that's coming in from the left, guide it through the material, and have it exit on the right. And this shows a computational simulation on the right of the resulting wave field that's passing through that material in a, in a, in a dynamic way. So he's kind of doing very sophisticated dynamic wave propagation and coupling that with design tools.